Hey guys, it's JPR with a new tutorial. Today I'll be showing you how to make a mask reveal effect in Cinema 4D. In After Effects, that's a pretty simple thing to do. Uh, just make a mask and animate it. In Cinema, it's a little bit more complicated, just the nature of 3D. Uh, but in this rig that I've created, I have a um, gradient driving a uh, alpha, and the alpha is being controlled by a uh, Espresso, and we're able to animate from 0 to 100, um, animate the mask on and off. So we're able to specify you know, the fade. Um, so the cool thing about this rig is if you have an object, or if you want to, you could quickly, it's, it's pretty procedural, so you could easily uh, send this to another object. So we have, it's any object that's edited, so we'll make this editable. We'll pop this into uh, here. We'll make sure that the texture is on the cube. And then it automatically updates to the size of the object. So that's one of the perks of this rig is just able to send it to other objects quickly. One of the drawbacks is, though, in Ex the Expresso, I wasn't able to figure out a way to quickly update this gradient depending on what ob a texture you're using. Uh, so if you have multiple of these gradients, um, you have to uh, duplicate this and make sure you update the, um, the gradient in here and whatnot so it knows what texture and update it properly here too. Uh, so that's the only thing that's a little bit more manual labored, but um, let's just get into a new scene to show you how I made this. So we'll just start off with the cube, uh, make that edited, uh, make a null, go espresso. Here, the espresso tag. Uh, we're gonna make a texture with alpha and put gradient. So in the gradient settings, we want it to be no cycle, and then we'll have it uh, 3D linear. So we're gonna bring in the cube. We need. We'll start this off from scratch, so you know where I'm going. We'll go to espresso general bounding box. Um, we're going to plug in the cube to the bounding box so it knows what object it's using. We're going to output the 0.1 and 0.3 um, because that's the this point to that point. That's the coordinates. Um, and now we're going to plug this into the gradient. Um, but in order to animate this, we need a range mapper. So we need the uh, start and end. And we need, uh, like I said, range mappers to ad be able to animate this back and forth. Uh, so we'll bring in a range mapper. We'll um, make this a vector data type. And we're going to input percent. and in here we'll make the user data that we need. Uh, so the first one we'll need is, well, we'll call the group uh, mask control. control. Uh, we'll make a uh, animate slider. We'll make this uh, float slider. Uh, and then we're going to make a data type called gap. And this is pretty much the fade part, and how much the gap is between the start and end of the fade. Um, we're going to actually not have this be, we'll just call it, put it real. We'll take off the, we'll make sure we won't go, the min, the min, uh, limit min is zero, so we don't go to negative. And then we actually need a, um, so we could be able to procedurally send this to other objects, we'll have to make a link list. Um, so here, and we'll call this object. That's okay. Uh, so now we'll bring in the Expresso. Uh, we'll bring in the animate output. We'll plug it into the, oh, the input of this. Um, Actually, we're going to make two nulls. Uh, we're going to, I'm going to delete these at the end of the tutorial, but this is just a visual representation of where the mask or where the gradient starts and ends. Um, 
it's just better uh, to see it visually. Um, so we'll bring in here, and here. We're gonna make sure, actually we'll do this. Um, global position, global position. We'll duplicate this. And we'll make it the end. Plug it in here. And then uh, now we need to plug in the um, the point one and point three into the range mapper. So we'll plug in here. Uh, this would be the lower. And then we need to plug it into the upper. So point three, plug in here, and then duplicate this. Plug this in to the lower or to the upper and lower. And now make sure we plug this into the start and end. A lot of setting up, but it will be worth it. Uh, so now we move the um, wait, something's not working. Oh, the animate. I always forget that. Um, yeah, make sure you put the, uh, the animate output to the input for the second range mapper. So we'll slide this and we see that, uh, the, that null, we're going to actually give us a better look, um, rectangle, we'll put 20. So you see that both of them are moving from the start and end, which is what we want, but we kind of want them to be offsetted so they're not right, right on top of each other. And the way we do that is um, we need to put, this is where the gap comes in. Um, so we'll put the gap. Um, and then we need a uh, math node. So we'll put, put that here. We're going to set that to subtract, plug in the gap into the second output or input the here I and mean, we actually have to make sure that it's a vector type uh, so do that here we'll plug into here so now oh we actually have to set it to put it to 10 so now you see that there's a gap between these two did I not put this into I think it's vector uh, oh wait those are vector oh the Oh, that's my mistake. The gap is not a vector um, data, so we actually have to delete this. Delete it, we'll make another one. Um, vector, take that off. We'll put it to default to 10. <clears throat> on the x-axis, because it's not on the y or z, it's on the x-axis. So press OK. Uh, we have to delete that. And then bring back in the Actually, I did not name this. I am just forgetting a lot of things. Um, gap. Okay. Uh, now plug this in here. Now it is offsetted correctly, uh, which is great. That's exactly what we want. The problem is, though, it does not clear the whole entire object. So that when the gradient is on here, it's not going to completely wipe it off. So we want it to um, overextend. So the next part is to um, give us a little bit more space. Um, we are going to, in here, going to make it overextend it. So we're going to put the end. We're going to add um, 10 more, whatever the gap is here. We're going to add it into the, uh, the point 3. So we'll delete both of these connections, in the point 3 to the out upper and then we're going to plug in um, uh, here and here um, and then plug in the gap here. So now you see that it overextends. Oh, and again, the vector, something that's wrong. What did I do? Oh, did not plug into the first output. There's lots of things to remember on this one, but uh, is it overextending it? Add, subtract, gap. Hmm. 
it's supposed to be overextending it, but it's not, and I have to figure out why. Um, here. Oh, that's why. Ugh, God. Uh, yeah, so here. That's working now. Uh, I keep on forgetting a lot of things. Sorry about that. Uh, so yeah, now we see it overextended, which is exactly what we want. Now we could apply the texture onto the cube and see it work its magic. So that is awesome. Uh, next step is to actually be able to use this function for the object. Um, so we could populate whatever whatever object we want. We're going to uh, bring in to the, or actually we could just bring here, um, object, plug into object. Uh, Right now, there's no object in here. Uh, actually, we're going to replace this cube with Espresso. So, in case if you delete the, in case if you have the cube here, you deleted it, it would turn yellow. So, we're just going to, in temporary, this is just an instance, but once you have an object in here, it will uh, know that this object is actually the cube. So, now you see that it's all updated. And then let's just say we want another object, go to the cylinder. Put this on here, make sure that it's editable actually, um, and then put it into the object. Now it's updated. So that is pretty cool. Uh, just updates real quickly. Um, and then the next thing is, like I said in the beginning, delete the start and end. We don't need this for visual representation anymore. I mean, if you prefer it there, then you can. We'll just delete it and we'll plug it into the start. And and so it's all set up. Uh, hopefully you guys find this useful. Um, it's a, just a, actually I didn't delete these. Yeah, so hopefully you find this useful. Uh, it's a cool workaround uh, and uh, hopefully this helps you out on some project. Until the next tutorial, I will see you guys then.